Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of sewing and quilting things here on YouTube. As you can see, we are in a different location. I am on the other side of my sewing room. <laughs> so if I turn the camera around, sewing area, and when you come back around over here, it's my bed. <laughs> so my sewing space is in my bedroom. So I kind of go through these phases of wanting to make my room look a little bit cuter, a little bit cuter, and um, I had a really cool idea to make some custom curtains for my window. I only have one window in here. Oh, by the way, that's Obi. She is my sweet baby girl. She's always with me, aren't ya? In every one of the videos, she's in the back, the background, guarding, watching out the window. But anyways, so I wanted to make some curtains in my my room because the curtains that I have now, they're okay. They're just store-bought. They have a pretty floral design on them, but I just thought, why not make something completely me and make it quilty, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So first things first, I have to come up here and replace my curtain rod because that curtain rod is actually broken. It broke and it's, uh, it's, it's just not quite what I want. So I got a new curtain rod. It's just a really simple one and it's white. And then I'm going to make some very simple patchwork curtains. So I will show you the fabric that I'm going to use. <sighs> so I ordered this fabric specifically for this because I saw it and I was like, oh my goodness, that is beautiful. So I got some, it's from Moda Fabric. Here, let me set the camera down here. So it's from Moda and it is by Gingerbur. I found this pack. This is a charm pack. So they're five inch squares and this is her quaint cottage collection. And oh my goodness, you guys, this is so cute. So the fabric has like little cottages and I really love the co uh, color palette. It goes really well with my room because my walls are blue. So there's several blue fabrics. I'll show you a better look at these um, when we're setting everything up. But there's like some fabric with a little A-frame. I have been obsessed with A-frames for a long time. <sighs> yeah, I just really like A-frames. I think they look cool. So I'm really excited when I saw that the fabric had A-frames on it. And there's actually one of the fabrics, this really pretty orange floral fabric. And if you look over here, lots of movement in this video. It's actually quite similar to my comforter fabric. But so that is the window. So we are gonna make curtains right now. Um, I've got some twinkly lights hanging up too. So I will have to take those down figuring out how I'll have those hanging up after I make the curtains. But these curtains that I have hanging right now, they go all the way down to almost the floor. And I just don't need a curtain that long because my bed's right up against the window. So I'm going to measure and just make them so they come down to like the level, the level of the bed. So I think that makes more sense. And my curtains are pretty much always open. But now since I'm making some really pretty patchwork curtains, they, I'll probably close them so I can see how the beautiful fabric and see how it looks. So, okay, that is enough of an introduction, I think. So now I'm going to take down that curtain rod, first of all, and hang up the new one and then take the measurements and then I will be back. <laughs> I also wanted to mention, I don't know if you noticed in my last video, but I announced that I started a Facebook group for anyone that wants to join. So I will have the link down in the description box below where you can come and join the Facebook group if you would like. Um, we're just sharing kind of what we're working on at the moment and it's been really fun so far. Uh, we have about, I think it's around like 120 people in there so far. So that's a really good start. And uh, yeah, I just love to invite anyone who wants to come join the group to come join. It's a good time. There's no quilting police in there. So I'm moderating it to make sure that, you know, no one's gonna be bullying anyone or, you know, just being unnecessarily rude. So if you would like to join, certainly can. 
Also, I've still got that link for 15% off your purchase at Missouri Star Quilt Company. Next video, um, I've got some really exciting news about that partnership that I have with them. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, I'm very, very excited for that. And I've got a really fun project planned for you guys for the next video that we're going to be doing. So go ahead and join that Facebook group if you want. Use that 15% off link at Missouri Star Quilt Company. Anywho, let's get into this kind of tutorial slash sew with me slash I'm figuring it out as I go. <laughs> All right, so I got the curtain rod hung up and I got my measurements made. So I'm a very visual person, so I like to always kind of do a little draw up of what I'm doing just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna make two separate curtains here. So uh, this entire expanse, so the top of my curtain rod, that is going to be 54 inches write it in the center here 54 inches and then on the side of my window that is I'm gonna have the length of the curtains be about 48 inches give or take we're not gonna be super picky here so 48 inches so each one of my individual curtains then needs to be 27 inches wide because 27 plus 27 is 54 so 27 inches here, 27 inches here. So now I take these numbers and I'm gonna divide them by four and a half because my five inch squares, uh, once I get my seam allowance in there, once I have them sewn together, they are gonna be four and a half by four and a half inch squares. So 27, let's get my calculator here. 27 divided by four and a half is six. So I need to have six squares wide. So I need my curtains to be six squares by, and then we take 48 and divide that by four and a half. 10.6666666667. I'm just gonna round that up to 11. So six inch squares six squares across and 11 inches down and both my curtains are going to be made that way so basically right now what i need to do is get my layout of my squares i have three packs of my of these um charm packs and charm packs have 42 squares in them usually i, I think that's kind of the general rule so there's 42 squares in each one of these so a little bit more math <laughs> so 42 times 3 is 126 so right now I have 126 squares if we do 6 times 11 that's 66 so we need 66 squares for each curtain so 66 times 2 since we're doing 2 I need 132 squares so that means 132 <laughs> minus 120 oops 132 minus 126 is six so I need to cut six more squares for this project I have I like to write everything down just so I don't have to do the math again I have have 126 need to cut six five inch squares so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna go to my stash and pick out something that goes with these fabrics. And then I will start laying them out in a layout that I like. Then we'll start sewing them together and we'll go on to the next step. So I went ahead and found some fabric that went with the ginger bee fabric and it's really cute Riley Blake fabric that has, I think it's supposed to be little pumpkins, but I thought it kind of looked like little apples and it goes really well with the fabric. So that would look very cute. So now I am just going to figure out the layout that I like for the squares. I forgot to mention, you could do this for any size window. You could use any size square you want. Um, I just went with the pre-cuts because you get a lot of different prints 
and they all already go together because they all come from the same collection. I just made it a little easier on myself by buying the pre-cuts. I didn't have to cut them out, though I did have to cut out six others to have enough. But so I'm just going to figure out a layout that I like here. So it's just going to be a matter of just playing around with the prints. This is really fun. It's a way to, you know, kind of get creative with your with your fabrics. Kind of what what I like to do when I am uh when I'm working with pre-cuts, um a lot of times I will break up the pre-cut bundle by kind of color family. So like these are all kind of like creamy colors. So there's a little pile then looks like these are greens so this just makes it a little easier to figure out the placement these are all pinks these are kinds of orange and brown and then a bunch of blue so there we go so I just kind of separate them I might actually do that with the rest of these just go ahead and separate them into those piles also Okay, I have all my fabric separated kind of by color over there. So I am just going to start creating my little pattern here. Just kind of lay it out. Let's see, I actually need to move these so I have plenty of space. layout out kind of how I want it so I've got 11 rows here 11 rows down and six rows across so this is one curtain so now what I'm going to do is how we do every single time we do one of these patchwork things I'm going to create little piles for each row and then I'm going to sew the rows together for the pressing pressing the seams I press all of the seams one way for row one so I press them all for example to the right you can do to the right or the left whichever you prefer starting with but then the next row you press in the opposite direction and that's going to help when we're sewing the rows together for those seams to nest and I'll kind of show you what I mean by that um, in a little bit so first I need to create my rows so I'm going to start over on the left hand side and I'm just going to stack my squares in whoops in order so there is row one then I just continue on down all the rows okay I am here at the sewing machine and I'm trying a different angle with the camera here so um, I've got my first row and I'm just gonna take the first two squares from our first row and they're gonna be sewn together that way. So we wanna put them right sides together, just like that. And then I'm gonna sew them together using a quarter inch seam allowance, just like normal. And we are just going to continue doing this process with all of our rows. So I'm gonna sew all the rows together first and then I'll press and then I'll sew the rows together to make our first curtain. So see, that's sewn together using the quarter inch seam allowance. And when you open it up, looks like that. So there is our first row. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love that. So I'm just gonna set this over here out of the way and then on to the next row. And I'm just gonna continue this process until I have all 11 rows sewn together and then I will meet you back here. Okay, so here I have all of my rows sewn together. So now we are going to press them. So the way that I do that is 
Like I said before, we're gonna have the rows going in opposite directions every other row, and that's gonna help with nesting the seams. So I'm just going to put these on my chair, and this is row one. And I'm just gonna I have it facing the way that it's going to be up on the window. I'm gonna flip it over. Got my little mini Aliso iron. <laughs> and I'm just going to press each seam to one side. Just like that. All right. Then I like to flip this over and just press it again on the top over the seams just to make sure everything's nice and flat and I didn't create some kind of weird crease there. And there, that one, one row is done. And then I go on to the next one. So row two, I've got it and I'm gonna flip it over but this time I'm gonna have all the seams going that way. So I just start over on this side and press it over. And just continue this process. Make sure when you are pressing your blocks, this is when whenever you are pressing seams, Make sure you are not like pulling the fabric as you're pressing because that can kind of put unnecessary strain on your stitches and it can kind of stretch the fabric and make it kind of wonky. So you just want to have the fabric laying flat. You don't want to be pulling it while you are pressing. I know sometimes that's a, it's a temptation. <laughs> but you want to resist resist that temptation, okay? And I just kind of go over them again here on top just to make sure it lays nice and flat. And there we go. I my little pile and I am just going to continue this process. So um, I'm on row three now. So row three, I'm going to be having go that way, right? Because I wanted every other one pressed in an opposite direction direction. So that is what I'm going to work on. I'm just going to press these quick. This really doesn't take that much time, but it makes a huge difference when you are piecing together or sewing your rows together rather. So just keep that in mind. I know it's a, it's a little bit of an extra step, but it is worth it. So it helps everything just align very nicely. Just like that. And I will meet you back when I have all of these pressed. All right. Okay. So I've got my, all my rows sewn together. And now we are going to sew the rows together <laughs> to create the first curtain. So I am going to take row one and row two. And put them right sides together. So, and if you're working with directional fabric, just make sure that it's pointing in the direction that you want to. So like the houses, I want them to be, you know, upright and not upside down. So just keep that in mind when you're piecing your rows together. And I'm just gonna line these up. If you want, you can pin them together, but uh, I'm not, I don't use pins. I just kinda, I just go with it, <laughs> so. Let me see if it'll let me show you. Yeah, okay, good. I've got my seams on row, was this row one? Yeah, row one is pointing in one direction. And then if we look over here, these seams are pointing up. So these are pointing down, these are pointing up. So that's what I mean when we have our seams going in the opposite directions. So then where the seams meet here, they come together. So you want the seams to kiss come right together and then when we are sewing them the stitches will hold those seams down really nice and flat and that helps everything like I said lay nice and flat and then it also helps have all four points from each square come together perfectly and it just looks really nice when you do that I'm just gonna do that on each 
point where my seams meet and I will show you what that looks like once I have this first row set sewn together. All right. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I love these fabrics so much. So as you can see, right where those four squares meet, it's perfectly aligned right there. And that's on each one of them. They are perfectly aligned. Yes, so that looks really good. Oops, you can't see it. <laughs> looks really good so far. And I am just going to continue sewing the rows on and then I will show you what it looks like once they're all sewn together. All right? Sounds good. <laughs> that so cute all right so this is what the back looks like so see our seams are nested very nicely there some are going this way next row is going that way now we need to press the row seams so I am just going to press them all in one direction that's how I do it if you want to you can take the time to press them open but I do not want to take the time to press them open. <laughs> so I'm just gonna press them all in one direction to get ready for our next step. So the next step is I am going to cut a piece of fabric to sew, the, to sew together with, with a, basically our quilt top. So basically what I am doing is I am gonna be making a large, pocket I guess is the way you could look at it um so I've already got our little quilt top made which is our curtain so then I'm gonna take a piece and I'm gonna put them a piece of fabric cut to the same size as what our curtain is and then I put them right sides together and we'll sew them together <laughs> I just need to put a piece of fabric that's basically going to be a backing to conceal all of my seams and to make the curtain a little thicker so it'll kind of work at work kind of like a blackout curtain. I'm not quite sure how well it's going to do with cutting out the light but really I only need that at nighttime while I'm sleeping because I normally have my window and my blinds open because I like having a lot of sunshine in here during the day. So I really don't need super blackout curtains. I just need something that's gonna keep the light from outside uh, to a minimum while I'm sleeping. Which really, I don't have a lot of light because I live in the middle of nowhere. So there's not street lights. Once in a while, a truck will drive by and some light will come into the window, but other than that, it's really not bad. It's just the moon and the stars. So I am so excited to see what this is gonna look like up. I haven't made large curtains like this before. I made some little kitchen curtains for my mom several years ago, and those were very cute. But uh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever made big curtains, and I just kind of had the idea, and I thought, why not? record record me making it maybe someone else will want to try it i would love to see if you do end up making curtains i would love to see them so yeah you could join my facebook group and post pictures of your curtains there i would just love to see what you're making <laughs> i'm just gonna finish pressing these seams and if you don't like the look of the small squares, you could also use a layer cake, which are 10 inch squares pre-cuts. So that would be a lot less sewing. And that would also look really, really great. And like I said before, you can make this for any size window. Um, if you wanted to use jelly roll strips instead, you could use that. Or if you have yardage that you want to use and just make a solid piece of fabric curtain, you could do that too. 
then you wouldn't have to do this next step where I'm adding a piece of fabric because you would just need to conceal your raw edges all the way around, which you would just fold them in and stitch. So that would be a lot less work actually. But I am very excited about the patchwork curtains. I am very excited about this. So I have all of my seams pressed. So everything is pressed now, laying nice and flat. Oh my goodness, I just love this so much. These fabrics are so beautiful. So cute. And I'll give you a close up of what the back looks like just so you know what it should look like. So see those seams, they're all laying nice and flat. So now I am going to measure this really quick so I know exactly what size piece of fabric to cut. So right now it's about 50 by 27 and a half. So that is perfect, that's what I wanted. <clears throat> so now I need to cut a, now I need to cut a piece of fabric that is exactly 27 and a half by 50 inches because I don't want there to be any awkward puckering when I sew these fabrics together. Um, so that's why um, I needed to get an exact measurement. So we know what we're working with here. Okay, so for my lining fabric, I guess we could call it. We could, yeah, we could call it lining fabric. Um, I have some very cheap fabric that I bought. It's very lightweight. Um, it's probably some, I think it's some kind of broadcloth. It's not super high quality, fancy, fancy fabric, but it's perfect for what I'm going to use it for, which is basically just being the back of my curtains. How I got this fabric was a quilt shop that was in a very small town here in Missouri was closing and they were just trying to get rid of all the, all of the fabric. And so they were selling fabric for like a dollar a yard. It was very, very cheap. So I bought a whole bunch of fabric. I bought like 150 yards of fabric or something. It was something crazy, but a lot of it was uh, not, it wasn't designer fabric. It was fabric I had never seen before. A lot of it was older fabric because it was a tiny quilt shop in a tiny town. It had probably been there for a long time. A lot of the fabric was very old and not great. Some of the stuff had stains on it, yada yada yada. But I found this fabric in my stash and it matches the curtains perfectly. It's like that perfect kind of peachy pink color. So and the this is very interesting too. It's one super long piece of fabric. I mean, this is several yards long, but it's only, let's see, how wide is this? It's only 22 inches wide. So uh, they must have used it for some kind of other uh, project and then, you know, just saved it and thought, well, we can sell this. So uh, <laughs> that's the story behind the lining fabric. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and cut this and um, just sew two pieces together to have it wide enough for what I need because I need it to be 27 inches wide and this is only 22. So you don't have to do it this way. If you would rather it be a solid piece of fabric, you can do that. But I'm never going to see this and it's going to be totally fine. <laughs> with having a seam in it. So the way that I cut, when I have to cut a really long piece of fabric, so this needs to be 50 inches long, what I do is, and I have a pretty big cutting mat, but it's obviously, it's not 50 inches long. So what I do is I fold the fabric in half. So, and then I, I measure it that way. So that I measure from the fold to the raw edge and and then I multiply that number by two to get the number that I need. So for example, I want a 50 inch long piece of fabric. That means I need the measurement from the fold to the raw edge to be 25, right? Because 50 divided by two is 25. I'm just gonna line up my fold with the line of my cutting mat just to kind of help and then I am going to get this lined up and look at the, the numbers on my cutting mat for reference. So 25 is right here. 
I've actually got the raw edge at about 26, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it there. So yeah, so things to keep in mind when you are cutting the super long piece is you want that your fold line to be straight with the line on your cutting mat. And then you also want your selvage edge to be straight with lines on your cutting mat. And that's gonna help it be um, as square as possible. It's a little tricky cutting long pieces, but you can do it. So that's when the markings on your cutting mat really come in handy. So I am just gonna go ahead and line up my ruler with the 25 inch mark on either side. I'm gonna line it up with 25 and 25 and then cut. And if this was regular yardage, um, I would be cutting one piece there, right? There's that little extra piece that was overlapped, but, but if this was, yeah, if this was regular yardage, it would be 50 inches long and then 42 inches wide, right? And I'd be able to open this up and it would be one piece. But since it was <laughs> at some point cut, um, it's actually just, a. Uh, 22 inches wide. So I cut two pieces and then I will sew these together to make one lining piece. So I am gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take these to my sewing machine and just sew down that length, the quarter inch seam allowance. Let's see here. So this is the selvage edge. So I'm gonna line up the selvage edge cause that's nice and straight. Perfect. So I'll just sew those together and then I'll meet you back. <laughs> okay, now I have my lining here. I pressed it so it lay as flat as possible and I have, I cut it down to size so it's the perfect, so it's the perfect size for my curtain. So now I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put them right sides together, okay? So line up the corners just like that. Shake it out. <laughs> So it's lined up good. Make sure that all the edges are lined up just like that. I'm gonna put a few pins in just to kind of hold it in place down by the corners just because I don't want anything to shift while I'm sewing. I'll put a couple of pins in here on the sides just like that. I'll come up to the top corners just like that so I've got everything pinned now I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around the entire perimeter of this piece but I'm going to leave an opening of about maybe like six inches or so and that's going to be how I turn everything right side down so let's take this over to the sewing machine and we will sew them together um, at the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these together. Okay, I got our lining and our top sewn together here. So I'm just gonna go back over and pull out these pins really quick here. I'm going to go to that opening that I left. There it is. All right, so there is our opening. So now we are just going to reach in and pull the right sides out. So I just kind of go to one corner and just gently pull it out. You don't want to pull really hard because you don't want to pull out any stitches or rip the fabric or anything. just gently pulling it out just like that and then just like many other products that we've done we're gonna go to each corner and just kind of wiggle that corner out I just use my finger you can use a chopstick or something but look how nice and sharp that corner is that looks good so that's one so I just continue doing that to each corner this kind of looks like a giant pillowcase <laughs> but it's not it's a beautiful curtain Corner number three, and then our last corner, corner number four. All right, 
There we go. Okay, I'm just going to give this a good shake over to the side here. Oh, this looks so cute. So now I'm going to go back to that opening and I'm going to stitch that shut. So I'm just going to take the raw edges from the opening and make sure that they are inside that seam. I'm going to kind of finger press it just to hold it in place good there. I'm just going to stitch that here quick. So that is stitch closed. So now, oh my, how cute. Okay, now I'm going to come to my top, the top of my curtain. And I want this to fit on my curtain rod. So what I am going to do is I'm first going to top stitch this top edge, I think. So I'm just rolling out that seam just so it's laying nice and flat. And I'm going to top stitch that real quick here just so it looks nice and clean. So top stitching is just doing a straight stitch about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'm going to do that real quick here. Here we go. That just kind of holds it nice and flat there. So now what I am going to do is I am going to create a little sleeve for my curtain rod to go in. So my curtain rod is about three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm going to make sure that my sleeve on my curtain is plenty large for that to fit in there easily. I don't want it to be super tight on there. So I am going to fold the top of my uh, curtain down. Let's see, how much is this? That's exactly two inches. So I'm gonna fold that down two inches and I'm gonna do that all the way across. So see, I've got it folded onto the back and that's gonna create a little sleeve for the curtain rod to go in. So that's two inches folded. And then I'm just gonna take a pin to hold that in place here. And I'm just going to place pins across there. I want to make sure that that stays even and just throw a pin in there every couple of blocks just to make sure that it is nice and straight. Just like that. And then this last. So that is the sleeve. Let me measure this to make sure. Yep, two inches. So that's going to be a nice sleeve for my curtain rod to go in there. So it looks like that from the front. And it looks like that from the back. All right. And now I'm just going to go along that top stitch line that I just did. And I'm going to stitch it. And that is going to hold that sleeve in place. So I'm just going to use my top stitch line as a guide. Okay. And now I take the pins out again because we do not want to poke ourselves, right? <laughs> and I think I'm gonna top stitch the bottom edge as well, just so that's laying nice and flat. I think it would just look a little nicer to have a top stitch on the bottom edge of the curtain. And I'm gonna top stitch. Now that is laying nice and flat. Now I am going to, again, give this a nice little shake and I'm just going to go along the edge of the curtain and just kind of roll it. You could top stitch it if you want. I don't think I'm going to because when you top stitch it kind of gives kind of a stiffness. Here let me move the camera so you can actually see me. <laughs> a lot of times if you do a top stitch um, it can kind of give like a stiffness. So like the bottom kind of has like a nice stiff edge and I don't really want the the sides of the curtain to have that. I want it to be a little bit more soft but I do want to kind of roll out that seam a little bit. So that is rolled out and just a little neater. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. Are you ready to see it on the window? I still need to do the other side, but I'm a little imp impatient and I want to see it. <laughs> all right, hopefully the lighting is all right. But I'm just gonna get up here. Can you 
you guys see? Oh, look how pretty. The sun is shining through the curtain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's even cuter than I thought. Let me okay, the light brighten it up at all. Oh my goodness. The lighting is a mess in here. But there is the first curtain. Oh my goodness. Seriously, I love that so much. Wow, I think it's the camera's having a hard time because we are definitely backlit. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's very bright. But uh, there we go. Maybe if I close the blind, you can see a little better. Yeah. Look how cute that looks. Oh, it looks so pretty. Yay. All right. Well, that is one half of the curtain done. So now I need to do the other one. So I'm gonna do that here real quick. It is 2.12. So next time you see me, we will have completed curtains, all right? All right, everyone, I just finished the second curtain. So very excited to show you these look <laughs> so cute. I'm hoping that the lighting looks all right. The lighting is just not super great with the curtains <laughs> closed because it's blocking out quite a bit of sunshine, which is nice. So if it's, uh, cause it does get quite warm in here when the sun's shining really bright, but I'm gonna turn the camera around here. And there's the curtains. How cute. I love how the sunshine kind of shines through and the curtains kind of glow. It's kind of, I mean, kind of similar to stained glass, not exactly the same, obviously, but it just looks so cute. Here, I'll get a close up so the squares look really good. It just looks so nice and glowy, and I just love it. It's a perfect, perfect quilty touch for my room. And that's what it looks like with the window open. Oh, yep, there's Obi. She's in her spot, making sure no bad guys come. To the house. <laughs> That's her job. These turned out so cute. I also, ooh, I also wanted to mention, I went ahead and I pressed the length seam of each curtain. So that just kind of helped the curtain lay a little bit flatter. It's not quite as like poofy. It's not like a big pouch. Now it just kind of lays flat. So that's an extra little step that you can do to have it lay a little bit flatter, but yeah, I think these turn out so great and I'm very excited to be able to enjoy them now. So I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial slash sew with me uh, project today. Um, these were a lot of fun. I hope you guys make some. If you do, I would love to see them. Come and join the Facebook group. And you could post them there, or if you'd rather just email me, you could email me. I've had several people email me their projects, and I just love seeing everything that everyone is making. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Uh, don't forget about the Missouri Star Quilt Company link. Get that 15% off. And um, yeah, I look forward to our next project, which is going to be really fun. It's going to include a free pattern, so keep an eye out for that next video. And uh, just thank you so much for watching until the end and have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye.